Hi, my name is Kendra Gaylord. I'm the host of the podcast Someone Lived Here, um, which is a show about old houses and kind of telling the story of the home by talking to historians and then doing a lot of my own research um, on the property, but also on the person who lived there. I often choose houses that were the homes of artists and creators and cool people is kind of how I define it. I thought that I could show you guys the ways that I research historic buildings and homes um, so that you'd be able to mirror it on your own apartment. So I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the TV show Friends, but it takes place in an apartment in New York City. So I thought it'd be fun to use the building that they use for the outside. It's always used for exterior shots. Um, the interior of the apartment matches it not at all. Like there's totally different windows, would be a very different apartment because it's actually filmed in LA. But I thought it'd be fun to use that property because it's definitely iconic. When you see it, you like know that that's the Friends building. Normally, I like to start with this um, New York City map, which is pretty much a geographic information system. And it means that you can layer on all sorts of stuff. It's kind of like a Google Maps, but for more like structural things. So, you know, it might let you know where like public beaches are and things like that, but it also often will have, GIS systems will have like, hey, here's how the plumbing comes into the town. Like here's where pipes are, things like that that are really useful to have. The most important detail you're gonna want right off the bat is the year that it was built. And that's pretty much gonna like help us decide everything else that we need to know about this um, about this property and it'll make it so that we can do all the following steps. So I see this as step one. You don't get that much like beautiful imagery. With some of these, we're actually gonna get like photos from the 1940s, like maps, all this cool history stuff. Um, but for this one, we're just gonna get a date and we'll be happy with it. So first we're gonna type in the address, which is 90 Bedford Street. You can see it's put it in red so we can zoom right in on that property. And in the right hand corner, there's a bunch of details about it. So the thing that I care the most about is this year built. Um, this tool, the New York City map is really helpful for other additional details you might wanna find. It tells you like, have there been any violations on the elevator? When was the last time it was checked? Um, there's also tax and property records, which can be really helpful to know who owns your building, who previously owned your building, what's the scenario there. Um, there's also a rat information portal, which is, I assumed I was like, oh, rat must stand for something. It doesn't, it's rat information. It's information about rats. So next up is my absolute favorite resource for historic research, and that's the 1940s tax photos. And so these were done as a WPA project, and they took photos of every single building in all of the five boroughs. And a lot of times the way it worked was there was two people who would go um, do the pretty much photo and like sur basic survey. Um, and I love it because a lot of times you can see it was partners, it was like a pair of people, and you can often see the person holding um, the little information placard. I just think it adds like such a cool story. You can see cars driving down the street, things like that. So I really love it. The thing that we're looking for here is the DOF, your borough 1940s tax photos um, and hit browse all. You can sort through by the actual street. Um, you can also often type, it doesn't work perfectly each time. So I actually would recommend using that left sidebar um, I do know it works for this one though, so. Yep, so we now have two photos of 90 Bedford Street. I always like to have Google Maps also open um, so that you can kind of compare where they took the photo versus um, what the street looks like now. So here we have what it looks like now versus this um, WPA project photo taken in the 1940s. Um, you can see it's definitely the same building. A lot of the details are the same. One thing that makes looking at buildings now a little bit harder is that um, there's a lot more trees in the city and a lot of times Google Maps is taking photos in the summer. So 
I always am so frustrated when I want to see the top of what a building looks like, but there's so many, I mean, it's good. It makes the whole neighborhood nicer, but God, I just want to see the tops of these buildings so I can compare them to the 1940s versions. So now we already have one historical photo. There's also one I believe taken from this side. So now we have those two. What's great is we now know that this building was built in 1900. We found that out from the New York City map. And that means that this next part is gonna be a little bit easier. There is this map collection called the Sanborn, Sanborn maps, and they were fire insurance maps. And you'll notice that pretty much the only reason why people would write down details of buildings was if it had to do with money. So for the WPA project, those were tax photos. And for this, they're fire insurance maps. Here, we're gonna scroll through. This is from the New York Public Library. They have these fire insurance and topographic maps. These were mostly done from like the 1890s to the 1920s. They are each like specific boroughs. So I know that the building that we're talking about is in Chelsea Greenwich Village and I'm gonna choose the one that's 1904 um, because the building was built in 1900 so I wouldn't want to miss it. This can look kind of complicated but it actually doesn't have to be. First of all look look at this like imagine if you went to Google Maps and this is what you opened up. I absolutely love it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the key um, so the key is like how you figure out which area we're talking about. So here we're looking for, I was looking for Christopher Street as my kind of signal and then Bedford and Grove. So this is the number four, which means that when I go back out to this area, I'm going to be looking for plate number four. So here it is. I I'd also recommend leaving open the key as a tab because it does have visual, um, details that you might want in the future. I would also recommend right here, it's actually not how directions are. Christopher is street is not like this, it's like that. So I would definitely recommend rotate it so it's the correct direction or else you will spend a long time being like, wait, what? Now we're full screen. We're looking at the corners of Grove and Bedford. So it is this long building. Um, you can see it's titled 90. So then we know that it's 90 Bedford Street, which is the same address. Keep in mind, the addresses aren't always going to be the same. There's a few different details. Red means that it's made out of brick, whereas yellow means that it's made out of wood. There's actually a historic building that was built in like the 1830s across the street that's made out of wood and it's like three stories. Um, and you can actually see that. Um, here it says S and D, and that means it's a storefront and a dwelling. So a lot of these are little initials. You can find out more details about it in that key. Um, 6B means that there's six floors and a basement. Um, FP to first means that it's fireproof to the first floor. Um, I the thing I like the most about this is that you can scroll around and you can kind of see what was in the neighborhood. Once again, it's mostly just for the purposes of like, will your house burn down? But it's still interesting intel. So there's a bakery right around the corner. Um, I love this. So behind it was a roofer and cornice maker. Um, odd, not really this building actually has a lot of cornices on it. So it makes you wonder, I wonder if they got them from here. Um, and then like one more building down, it was a toilet and laundry soap factory. Next up uh, that is also through the New York Public Library is photographic views of New York City. It's kind of almost like indexed photos of New York. It's nowhere near as comprehensive as those tax photos, but the benefit is these are from much earlier. So there's a photo of what I believe is the building that was there before the Friends building. It's a photo from 1900 and it looks like it's in the same location. So that suggests that before it was that, it was this older building. So I'm gonna go pull that up for us. I'll show you kind of how I look around these photos. And I'm also, actually, you know, I'm gonna look up Bedford and Grove. I'd usually start with one street, see what progress you make, and then put in the second. 
So these are all supposed to be the intersection of Bedford and Grove. The reason I believe it is this, the property that was there before is because here it says Grove Street, South Side, uh, SS, East Bedford Street. Once again, it's great to look at our map and it said South Side of Grove Street, so somewhere on this bottom half, and then it says East Side of Bedford, so that would be here. So it is technically in the writing, it says that it's the same block spot. And the New York Public Library has a ton more information. I would highly recommend just poking around there. One last piece that I'll show you guys is the Apartments of Metropolis. Um, this was a book written um, in like 1908. Um, and it shows a bunch of apartments that were recently built in the area. So if you find out that your apartment was built from like 1900 to 1908, 08 say I definitely noticed most of these apartments were on like the upper east or west side so this would be a really cool thing to look at these are big apartment buildings they actually have interior floor plans they're beautiful like kind of luxury apartments also I would recommend if you're going through this list scroll to the bottom to the index it's unfortunately still titled by um, the name of the building if your building is called the Ardmore like look for that title um, but yeah, you can actually look through the list and it's annoying, but you can scroll through and you can kind of see specific addresses and that might be a little bit more helpful. Then they also have images of like just kind of your basic two apartment house, your basic tenement um, building. It's a cool thing to look at and kind of see the interior layouts of buildings. I love this book. I just want more people to look at it so that they can see if their building's in it and then let me know. So that's me asking you to do that. The other thing that has those interior layouts of buildings is this collection um, from Columbia University and it's called the New York, New York Real Estate Brochure Collection. And this is pretty much a brochure collection of all of these real estate, like if you were trying to get someone to move into this apartment, what would you be showing them? I couldn't find one again for the property that we were talking about, 90 Bedford Street, but I think that there's a lot here and it's worth looking, um, checking if your apartment's in it. You can do a search that you're looking for, but I would just do um, the street and then just like scroll around a little bit, get your bearings and see if you can find it. So like this is one Gracie Square. You can kind of see it's this like beautiful little drawn piece that shows you like what the area is like. And then it's pretty much just like an ad, like a glorified ad for the property. Along with prices, floor plans, everything that you would need. They say it's ready summer 1929. One of the last locations that I'd say to take a look at is the Urban Archive. You might want to do this at the beginning. The Urban Archive um, for New York City is a really cool tool that you can actually even have on your phone as like a, just a mobile app. It's really neat because it shows you the history of places. I'd also highly recommend following them on Instagram. So here's the location that we were talking about, 90 Bedford Street. You can of course just search it. Um, this doesn't have that many details. Um, for the building we're talking about, but if you look across the way, they have details for 17 Grove Street that's just across the street. I really like this tool. I do wish there was more in it, and I know it's not their bad. I think it's that it's, it's hard to pull all these assets from all these places and have public records for all of it, because when I look in my neighborhood, for example, there really isn't that much there. Um, but you might be lucky if you live in a place that has a lot of details already set aside for here. So that concludes um, the one where we look up the history of the friend's house. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see in the future, I plan on doing more videos. If you want to give my podcast a listen, it's Someone Lived Here. Um, you can access it at someonelivedhere.com or on your podcast app. The first episode is about the Alice Austin house, which is on Staten Island. Um, and it was a woman who, a photographer living in the 1890s. If you are looking for old photos of New York, I would actually really recommend looking through her collection, um, which can be found on their website. 
She was in a loving relationship with another woman for the entirety of her life. It's a really beautiful story and the home is absolutely gorgeous. And I had so much fun walking through it. So I think you'll really like that episode if you are interested in history and old homes and buildings in New York City. Go take a look at that if you're interested. And I um, hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks. <laughs>